my name is Patricia Miranda, and welcome to the third episode of Nick Jukebox. I'm going to give off a quick little recap of what Nick Jukebox is, if this is the first time that you're listening to it. It's a music podcast that compilates classic Nickelodeon songs from shows and movies from the 1970s all the way up to the 2000s. In every episode of Nick Jukebox, we always start off with an opening theme, go through each decade of music to see how it progressed over time, and end it with an ending theme. Today's opening theme is going to come from America Goes Bananas. Originally called Columbus Goes Bananas, it was a little local kids show that showed around the year 1979. Had various hosts uh, during that one year, and they would play games, and they would sing songs, they would have serious topics discussed, and various amounts of other things. The show only lasted one year because of many factors. One of them, including the fact that disco was pretty much dead around 1980, and the show really has a disco aura. You just watch at least a clip of it, and you know that it's from the 1970s. Another factor was is that the show was local, only shown around Columbus, Ohio. Around the same period, ABC was showing a show similar to America Goes Bananas called Kids Are People Too. It was more national, they had more celebrities in there, and so that's why it was completely overshadowed, and eventually the show was canceled. I talked about America Goes Bananas in the Nickelodeon tribute, and the show is completely outdated by today's standards. However, the The genre itself about a kid's show focused on kids' topics is not something that you would see every day. It's really interesting, and I think that you should check it out to see what one of the precursor Nickelodeon shows was. This is way before Double Dare and way before Doug and Rugrats and Run and Stimpy. It really is interesting when you look back and see how old a Nickelodeon show can be. I mean, you think that the song that you're about to listen to is corny? Watch the opening theme and then listen to the song. It is beyond just corny 70s-ville. I love it. And then afterwards, it's You're My Brother from Pinwheel. As I mentioned before in episode one of Nick Jukebox, Pinwheel was Nickelodeon's very first program during a time in which it was called the Pinwheel Network. It was basically a kid's show that had lasted the longest amongst all the other shows at the time. That is, until You Can't Do That on Television came along. It lasted for almost 10 years, featuring itself on six-hour marathons every single day of the week. It was like the SpongeBob of his time. And then afterwards, we got a couple of other songs, so let's get to it. Here is the opening theme for America Goes Bananas. Cause you're my brother I never fight You 
you always help me when I'm counting. Rush, one, two, three. <laughs> You're the only brother in the world for me. Well, that's good, because you're my favorite sister, too. Make me jump up and sing. It's such a wonderful thing. You're my brother. I'm your brother. I'm the sister who knows that wherever she goes, she has a brother. That's me, yeah. So please believe me when I say that my favorite jewel always be. <laughs> I'm so glad to have a brother like you. The bus, bus, bus goes the bumblebee. Biddle, diddle, diddle goes the bird. But the sound of your sweet voice, darling, is the sweetest sound I ever heard. Well, I've seen the beauty of the red, red rose. Seen the beauty of the sky so blue. Seen the beauty of the evening sunset. But the beauty of you, sweet is the honey on the honeycomb. Sweet are the grapes on the vine. But there's nothing sweet in you, darling. And I hope someday you'll be mine. Take it. <laughs> Well, buzz, buzz, buzz goes the bumblebee. Billy, goes the bird. But the sound of your little voice, darling, is the sweetest sound I ever heard. Well, I sing the beauty of the red, red rose. Sing the beauty of the sky so blue. Sing the beauty of the evening sunset. But the beauty of you, sweet is the honey from the honeycomb. Sweet are the grapes on the vine. But it's none as sweet as you, darling. And I hope someday you'll be mine. And I hope someday you'll be mine And I hope some very fine day You'll be mine You will be mine You will be mine Baby, please darling, say that you will Be mine Ooh. 
I'm hearing the light from the window. I'm seeing the sound of the sea. My feet have gone loose from their moorings. I'm feeling quite wonderfully free. And I think I will travel. on the 1980 Nickelodeon program Pop Clips. I already mentioned about Pop Clips in episode one of Nick Jukebox and throughout the Nickelodeon tribute. But here's a little recap. Pop Clips was uh, created by Michael Nesmith, AKA the former member of the Monkees. He used it as a promotional device for Warner Communications Record Division, which was what he was using at the time. And he used it to feature a whole bunch of other people's music videos, including his own, such as Rio. Uh, the show only lasted for less than a year until it's ending in the year 1981. Why? Three letters, 
M T V. Michael Nesmith and William Deere, one of the developers of Pop Clips, were giving a huge amount of money in order for them to buy the show. They refused. The same people who did wanted to buy it eventually turned the idea into a 24-hour music video channel, which would become MTV. And we already know what MTV would turn out to be in the 80s. The biggest, most popular channel for teenagers. Nowadays, it's known for showing crap like Jersey Shore. Well, wait a minute. It's not showing Jersey Shore anymore! Woohoo! The world is sane again! Ish. Oh well. I'm waiting until Honey Boo Boo causes the apocalypse. And before that, it was um, Buzz 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 by The Usual Suspects, and that featured on Eureka's Castle. Yeah, yeah, I know. Another Eureka's Castle with The Usual Suspects. I know. But less I, I already mentioned this before, it's not easy finding 80s songs for Nickelodeon. I'm sorry. Apparently, you know, local bands such as The Usual Suspects and Squeaky Clean made a lot of appearances in Eureka's Castle singing these songs. And until I find something else, um, you're going to be hearing a lot from them. I'm sorry. And before that, it was um, the pirate song from Spartacus and the Sun Beneath the Sea. And before that, it was You're My Brother from Pinwheel. And before that, it was the opening theme to America Goes Bananas. Coming up, we're about to shift over from the 80s to the 90s. And we're going to kick that off with Shout Your Lungs Out by the Beats from Doug. Uh, yeah, definitely one of the more memorable songs from the Beats. Next to Killer Tofu and I Need Mo Allowance. And then after that, we got the Lord Loves a Hangin' from the Ren and Stimpy Show. Yes, a very controversial song about the wonders of getting lynched. Uh, for some reason, something so unbelievably awful can sound so fun if you just twist it around a little bit. The Ren and Simpy show was known for that. They were able to take really taboo topics and subjects and just make it so unbelievably fun. Fun. And then we got a couple of other songs, so you know what, let's get to it. Here is Shout Your Lungs Out from the Beats from Doug. <laughs> Everybody, let's have a hoedown! Oh, the Lord loves a hanging, that's why he give us next. It tightens up our vocal cords and loosens up our pecs. So if you are a horse thief and guilty to the bone, go ahead and blame a friend and you won't hang alone. It may be hard to swallow, but you'll be three feet taller. It's a brand new way to entertain your friends. You say you are a villain, but can't abide by killing. Go ahead and steal yourself a horse. Two, three, eleven, R, five, six. Figures, boys. <laughs> I'm a picking. And I'm a swinging. I'm ignorant. And I'm ugly. That you are, boy. So do we by heck So get yourself a lasso And decorate your neck Oh, we is awful ignorant And uglier in sin 
So go, go ahead, ahead and cut us down <laughs> And hang us all again Hanging that is Swing a spell
in pieces on the floor. So tell me why shouldn't I break some things of yours? I'll smash your lamp, the antique chair, that stupid thing you always wear. I'll smash a vase, the radio, those little teacups from Limo's. Your wacky paintings on the walls, got it pow! I'll smash them all, lover, it's just a game, Cupid can take the blame, I'll take the place apart. But don't worry, I won't smash your heart Not me, maybe some other clown, but I'm not gonna smash your heart, baby I'm talking to Dino over here And that was Smashed by Dino Spumoni from Hey Arnold. That song came from an episode in which it involved with Arnold having to make a decision on whether to follow his neighbor Ernie Potts' decision of wanting to break down and demolish the Circle Theater or to be sided with his grandmother to save it because that was where Dino Spumoni, the famous singer, used to be able to perform there and that was where her and Grandpa Phil had their first date. At the end, of course, they saved the Circle Theater because Ernie Potts just happened to be a huge Dino Spumoni fan, and he would never do something like that. So, good for him. Dino Spumoni showed himself in a couple of other episodes singing songs, so that was the first one that he did sing, and that was the first uh, time that we were introduced to the character. And before that, it was a gift from a Bob from Susie Carmichael and Angelica Pickles from the Rugrats movie. That's basically the first song that you also hear in the movie. And it's also and it's also compilated with the Rugrats movie soundtrack as well as a whole bunch of other songs. And before that, it was Everywhere by Polaris, coming from the Adventures of Pete and Pete soundtrack. And before that, The Lord Loves a Hangin' from the Ren and Stimpy show. And before that, it was Shout Your Lungs Out from the Beats from Doug. Coming up, we're about to shift over from the 90s and go all the way up to the 2000s. And we're gonna kick things off with the Jimmy Neutron theme from Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius. I'm not talking about the opening theme from the Adventures of Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius. No, I'm talking about the Jimmy Neutron theme song that was sung by Bowling for Soup. It was one of the very few songs that is exclusive with Jimmy Neutron that wasn't like an old pop song from like the 80s, such as Kids in America. But then again, I could have also chosen Aaron Carter's Leave It Up To Me or Romeo's Parents Don't Understand, but do you really want me to do that? Am I that cruel to you? And then afterwards, we have You Are a Pirate by Lazy Town. You are probably looking at me very odd, aren't you? Well, telling you the truth, Lazy Town is a very sort of interesting kind of show, despite the fact that it came all the way from Iceland, and the fact that the guy who plays Sportagus actually happens to be the creator of the show. Yeah, um, Lazy Town has its good moments, uh, one of them including uh, Robbie Rotten, which, you know, to tell you the truth, even though he's the villain, he's actually one of the main highlights of this show, despite the fact that all the other characters are pretty bland. But uh, some of the songs were actually pretty decent, and this is one of them. This is actually, I think, the song that everybody associates with with Lazy Town. It's actually become a huge internet meme, and every time somebody celebrates Talk Like a Pirate Day, they always play this song. I am not joking. You see this on Twitter like a billion times. It's actually pretty funny. And then we have a couple of other songs right before we conclude it, so here we are with the Jimmy Neutron theme from Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius.
What do you want? Cause a pirate is free. You are a pirate. Your heart fitted in teeth. Being a pirate is a wretched thing. Do what you want, cause a pirate is free. You are a pirate. You are a pirate. Yeah. We got us a map to lead us to a hidden box that's all locked up with locks and buried deep away. We'll dig up the box. We know it's full of precious booty. First, open the locks and then we'll say hooray. Away. Adventure waits on every shore. We set sail and explore. Then Ren and Jim all day. We float on our boat until it's time to drop the anchor. Then hang up our coats until we sail again.
and sliding to the rescue. If you've been pinned down by a posse of clown, you break up the party, get lost. You never hear him crying. He's brave as a lion when he jumps into action. Martial arts expert of a 
and that was Rosalina by the Naked Brothers Band. Now I have a little bit of a confession when it comes to talking about the Naked Brothers Band. When the mockumentary movie came out around 2006, I thought it was cute. You know, oh, you know, uh, a little boy band is coming out, and it's about these two little brothers who aren't even 13. How cute. Or like a 2000s version of Hanson. But then when the TV show came out, you don't know how serious to treat it. Is it supposed to be a follow-up to the mockumentary? Is it, is it supposed to be taken seriously? When you see them interacting with celebrities, they have a kid agent, and I don't know. You just watch the show and you can't treat it seriously. I really don't know what to say about it. When it comes to the song Rosalina, it sounds like it would be a really nice song. But the problem is, is that, first of all, it's sung by Nat. And he's, what, 11? And Rosalina is like 13 or 14 years old. What does he know about love? Are you kidding me? You're singing a song about that you have a love for this girl girl, but at the same time, you haven't even reached puberty, and yet you fall in love with this girl. You know, if it was, it was maybe if Rosalina was a little bit younger, it would have been considered as cute. If it was a little, if, it was, if the characters were a lot older, it would have been considered very romantic-ish. But the fact of the matter is, is that with Nat being 11, or with Rosalina being in her teens, it seems a little off-putting. But, you know, I haven't really done a lot of songs consisting of the late 2000s, so uh, there you go. Rosalina by the Naked Brothers Band. And before that, it was uh, Chucky Chan, coming from the Rugrats in Paris the movie soundtrack. Uh, the, the scene in which Chucky has the dream about him being like this really strong martial artist like Bruce Lee or Jackie Chan, and him being strong and brave, it's actually one of the best highlights in the entire movie. And is also one of the best songs in the entire movie. And whenever I see this movie, I just keep thinking to myself over and over, over and over again. Why is the movie taking place in France? Why doesn't it take place in Japan? It's so... It takes place in a Japanese theme park. The woman that Chaz falls in love with is Japanese. It has a Japanese feel to it. They go to a Japanese restaurant. There's, there's Japanese all around. They don't utilize Paris enough. The only time in which they do is with the scenes with Spike and them going to Notre Dame for the wedding, but... You know, it, it's, it, it, sh it should have taken place in Japan. The whole thing with Paris, that seems really tacked in. And I feel the same way is going to happen with the Smurfs, too. And before that, it was We Are Gonna Happen by Emma Roberts, coming from the Unfabulous soundtrack. For a lot of people, they don't really remember Unfabulous. Unfabulous was a teen show that came out around the early 2000s. It had Emma Roberts playing as this young girl and who had a passion for writing songs. And she dealt with everyday girl problems and stuff like that. Meeting up with a boy, hanging out with friends, and so on and so forth. But one of the main quirks about this show was that it's about a girl who has a love for playing music. She just does it because she enjoys it. She doesn't do it because of the fame like Hannah Montana. You know, I've actually underestimated Emma Roberts. At f uh, she was either in movies that were really, really terrible, like the Nancy Drew movie, or everybody just knew her as Julia Roberts' niece. But, you know, as time went on, she kind of surprised me. She actually did really good in a couple of the movies that she's been in, including Scream 4. Uh, a shout-out for you, Brett Club 85. And, yeah, the, the soundtrack is eh, hit or miss, especially when you consider that it's a song about a teenage girl going through problems and having girl issues. But still, um, this song is surprisingly nice. It's actually the best song in the entire soundtrack, but, you know, that's not really saying too much. And before that, it was uh, You Are a Pirate by Lazy Town. And before that, it was the Jimmy Neutron theme from Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius. Now we're about to conclude this episode with the ending theme to Avatar The Last Airbender. Yes! Finally, we get some Avatar music in here. Um, I have to say that when Avatar The Last Airbender first came out, I underestimated this show by a lot. This was during the time in which Japanese-fused American cartoons were in, and 
a lot of them were not very good. You had um, a lot of these shows coming out, and uh, the most popular one at the time that a lot of people know of was Shaolin Showdown. And when Avatar The Last Airbender first came out, I thought it was a Shaolin Showdown ripoff. By the first two episodes, I was immediately hooked. And as of to this day, Avatar The Last Airbender is the best Nicktoon to come out in the last decade. You know, maybe you might say that The Fairly Odd Parents is the best, or maybe My Life as a Teenage Robot's the best. Shout out to you, Mad Hog Die Master. And, yeah, I mean, some of those shows were good, but Avatar The Last Airbender had something that Nickelodeon didn't have. They didn't have a story that focused on a lot of the aspects that we all know of today. A show with a fantastic storyline, memorable characters, a great kick-ass soundtrack, a really good mythology. And everything about it was just so fantastic. And even though The Legend of Korra has a few flaws, it's still a really solid show, and it's shaping up to be one of the best Nickelodeon shows that has come out in this decade. We'll just see how it ranks up with not only the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon, but with, um, with all the other ones that are to come in the next eight or nine years. I'm hoping to God that things get better. All right, so I leave you with uh, the ending theme to Avatar The Last Airbender. And I'm Patricia, and I hope to catch you around old school lane soon. Take care.